Now, since I know you got your hair done, you got braids on, but obviously you can tell what type of hair did my brother have right here? What texture here? Well, the Bible just told you what Christ's hair is like. You got a like picture here to tell you what Christ's like, hair is like. Wool? Like wool. Yeah. Brother, what texture is your beard? What texture is your hair? Like wool. We have to identify with what the Bible is saying, that this is us. Word. This is us in this Bible. We got to make it real. This ain't just words. You understand? Word. This is life for us. Shalom, my brother. Read on. As white as snow. So what happened to our old men and our old women? What hair, what, how did their hair turn? You might say this man hair turned gray, right? Yeah. But it says a woolly texture that turned white as wool. Yeah. Who identifies that? Our older men, right? Look, it's one right there. Yeah. An older brother right there. Woolly hair, white beard, identifying with the image of Christ. These Word. are tendencies of a black man, right? According to the Bible. Read on. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. Give me Genesis 49, 12. So we're going to stop there and we're going here because a lot of people think that it's a sin to drink wine, right? It's a sin to get drunken, to get intoxicated. The Bible tells us and it commands us to be sober-minded. So our Messiah drunk wine, right? When you drink wine, what, what eye color, what, how does your eyes look? What color do they turn? They turn red. They turn red, right? And we bearing witness with the prophecy of the Bible. Red eyes, woolly hair, he drunk wine. Read on. Genesis chapter 49 and verse 12. His eyes shall be red with wine and his teeth white with milk. This is describing our Messiah. This is describing us in the Bible, who we are. A, old, a older brother, woolly hair, right? With red eyes, right? Because he drunk wine. This is our Messiah. Who does this look like? So far, what we described, does it look like this man? Or does it look like this man? This man, right? This man. And that's just the Bible. This ain't my words. You can open up the King James Version that's in your church and read the same things. Right. The same things. This ain't no magic Bible that's NIV, K, whatever. This is KJV. Right. The same thing we all grown up with in this church. Right. Christ looked like me and you. Christ looked like all of us. Jeez. This is our Messiah. This is our book. This is our history. Right. And that was the importance to give our people hope. You, you need to hope for things. Hope some way to get out of this. Right. That's what we preaching. Read. Proverbs chapter 13 and verse 12. Hope deferred maketh the heart sit. But when the desire cometh, it is, as a, it is as a tree of life. It says hope deferred. Hope deferred, that's where we at right now. What are you hoping for? You go to a job tomorrow, that's what you're looking forward to? Endlessly paying bills, a light bill, a water bill, electric bill, a car note, car insurance. That's what you're looking forward to? That's your end, you gonna die doing this? You gonna die living your life like this when it's something much greater. The kingdom of heaven, the earth is given unto us as the Israelites, right. to us pertain of the adoptions. That's say of our Messiah. Right. We have so much more for us, but our oppressors keep us down. That's why we building it up right now, teaching our people who we are. So when the Bible say, hope deferred, read it again. Hope deferred, make it the heart sick. It make it the heart sick. You ever seen somebody, when they're giving up, they start turning a little lighter, darker. They start dying a little bit inside. They don't know what to do. They die. Right. They die because they lost hope. All you got to look for is oppression and no way out. You need a way out. You, you're a drug dealer. You do this because you love your kids, right? You do this because you need to make a way. You go to work because you need to make a way. You need to provide. And there's no way out. There's no sense of hope. No way out of this. Once you provide a day, what you got to do tomorrow? Anybody, what you got to do tomorrow? The same thing. Same thing. It's madness. And the Bible say oppression make a wise man mad. Get that for me. The Bible said that. That's the words of the Most High God. Read. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 7. Bring it out. out. Surely oppression make a wise man mad. When y'all come into the commandments, and that's what we're here to do, to edify our people. This is us. Right. This is us in the Bible. This is us. Jeez. This is our Messiah. Ain't nothing to be ashamed about for being having a contrite heart. This is us. I come and stand in front of y'all and tell y'all, man, I'm tired. I'm tired. I work 12 hour days to no end to provide. And how many more of y'all are like that? How many more of y'all are like that? Trying to find a way. It's madness. Like the Bible said, oppression make up a wise man mad. When you wake up to the understanding of this Bible, it's, you're going to realize certain things. Why am I doing this? 
it got to be a way out. It got to be better than this. But we got to identify who we are according to the Bible. Right. That's why when y'all came up, I know y'all heard, all praise to the Most High. Y'all heard that we were teaching who we are according to the Bible. When we came out here, the Lord sent us out here because his brothers and sisters like y'all that need to hear the word of God. That's right. right. We needed to hear it. I was just once a nigga walking across the street, didn't care about nobody. But now I see y'all different. I see y'all, I feel y'all different. I know y'all different. And that's because of the word of God. You understand, my brother? But we got to come back to the commandments. That's right. We got to. And this ain't no church day when I'm dancing. Yo, here's a, here's, a, here's a hat. Put in $5. No. This is free. Right. This is free because this is medicine. That's right. This is the healing. Give me John 7. Give me John 7 by the physician. Because Christ don't need to speak to the people, speak to the people who good. Why he need to speak to the rich man? He good. He got it. He ain't got to worry about what I'm going to put on this table. He ain't got to worry about who's going to take my stuff when the uh, repo man pulls up because he don't care about your situation. The bank don't care about your situation. They don't have no mercy on you. It's gone. And now you got to find another way. You have to find another way. Read on. Matthew chapter 9 and verse 12. Bring it out. But when Jesus heard that, he said unto them, they that behold need not a physician. Y'all hear that? They that behold need not a physician. So just like I said, the rich man, the man that's well off, those who claim themselves to be better than us in this situation, they don't need Christ. Because in their mind, they can escape all this. Because money, right? But for us who need the money, who need a way to get, it out, get out of this, to find hope, right? To find that key thing, hope, read on. But they that are sick. They that are sick. Me, this brother, that brother, that brother, that brother, you, her, everybody out here, we all sick. We huh? need healing. We need a way. We need a Messiah. Right. Come on. Right. But go you and learn what that meaneth. I will have mercy and not sacrifice. For I am not come to call the righteousness, but sinners to repentance. But sinners to repentance. Y'all know what sin is according to the Bible? Let's get 1 John 3 and 4. Because it's a misconstruction about what sin is, what are we doing out here? Because we need this medicine. Christ said he called the sinners. So who would those sinners be? Because we always hear God so love the world that he forgot his only son and everybody all will be forgiven. But no, we got to stop all that BS that's being taught to our people. It ain't doing nothing but destroying us. That's right. Day by day. I'm all right with God, but stuff like this keep happening. His people are cursed according to the Bible. Teach. Because our disobedience, we didn't listen to Christ. Right. So now once we broken down, we willing to listen, that we admit that we sick and we need healing. We need more than just what can be offered on a Sunday that make us feel good. Right. Now it's time for the building, the building of the nation of Israel. First John chapter three and verse four. Bring it up. Whosoever commit a sin, transgressive also the law. So that sin is transgression law, transgressing the Lord's law. And for example, we're going to bring out some laws. Give me Deuteronomy 22 and 5. All right, sis. sisters, you know what I'm saying? We read in the Bible, all right? This is the medicine, all right? So some of those things that we transgress. Let me ask y'all something. When have y'all ever seen a princess wear pants? When have y'all seen it? Like a princess. You haven't seen it? When you watch the princess movies, what do y'all see? But why is it taught to our people that we got to wear, a, that our sisters got to wear dresses, uh, pants to be beautiful? Don't they look beautiful with dresses with the gold being decked out, all those things for them? That's sin according to God. Your enemies taught you that that's okay. Right. The people who are against your people, they taught you that's okay. Right. And what happens when a woman wears pants, spandex? What happens? What type of uh, irritations or irritants happen? What type of irritants? Yo, oppressor, to the uh, so-called Caucasian man and the other nations that be with him told you, no, nah, y'all can wear pants. Y'all can, it's all right. Then you get an irritant or an irritation or some type of disease. Like, what's going on with me? Jeez. Why am I? Because that's God. God told you not to do it. He told his babies not to do that. Y'all princesses on the earth. Right. Right. Y'all princess, y'all supposed to be wearing dresses. Right. Doing things opposite of that, that's sin. Right. And you learned that from another nation. You went after that because of your lust. Read on. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. And we're going to get on the men too. It ain't just about y'all. But this is an example. This is that spiritual healing. Read on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So what pertaineth unto a man is pants or linen breeches according to the Bible. Right. right? When we talk about cross-dressing, now y'all can tell me I would look crazy out here if I came out 
Y'all came up, y'all heard all this beautiful teaching, all this healing going out. And then I stepped beside this, this sign, y'all see me with a long dress on, a frilly dress on, and I turn around, y'all, oh, hold up. Naturally, y'all know that's against God. Y'all, I don't even have to tell y'all that. Y'all be like, whoa, 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 nah. I'm gonna get back in my car, because he just got strange. It just got strange. He just talked about God, now he's doing something strange. The Bible covers these things as being strange, because they were taught to us by another nation. Right. It's strange. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. There you go. And God said, neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. Because it works both ways. You don't wear pants, you wear dresses. You see me come out here with a dress. Oh no, that's crazy. Off the rip. But that's God that's saying that. What is the nation? Nation is men leading by example.